Hey, James. Hi. You know what's pretty cool about being alive today? Tell me. We get to re-experience Phantom Menace and the sequels in general. I don't know why I say Phantom Menace, but because of social media, all of a sudden there's a new influx of, of memes. Uh, uh, I don't want to say centered around it, but I think the biggest one being Bananakin. Which is Anakin as a banana. I love me some banana. <laughs> you are my brother, Bananakin. <laughs> but uh, I, this hit me the other day when I saw. I mean, we've seen it like sand. I don't like it. The Darth Vader like doesn't like sand. And uh, uh, Anakin, I have the high ground. Uh, but what hit me the other day was when it was like, I'm a person and my name is Anakin. And I'm just like, there's so many amazing lines that we kind of forget, sort of. Because yeah. we don't, like, when that movie came out, we kind of didn't have social media where people could dwell on certain things. Yep. The, not saying we don't know this, but I love it. I just, like, what a time. Like, it would be interesting to, if we could watch Force Awakens 20 years ago. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't have that movie, but, like, would we be missing out on a whole lot of, whole other thing? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause These are the questions. There are a lot of Forrest Wiggins memes mm. that we would not yeah. get if this was 20 years ago. No. This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. This is meme talk. I'm Brock. This is... James. I'm... Wait. Uh, I don't know. We're in, This is take stinker. two of this episode. I can't lie. You tricked me. This is the second... Second take of yep. us doing it. We did this uh, a day ago. <laughs> it, that was just a dress rehearsal. It was a dress It was a good one, too. Hopefully, this one will live up to mm. it. We've got a great show for everyone today. Yay. I don't have my notes in front of me, so Brock, you're going to have to excuse me while I pull up the website. But we got a no, great show. We're going to talk some Snoke, some Luke, some Han, some Never Tell Me the Odds. You're gonna, you got some books or yeah. comics to talk about. we got the Hollow News, yep. and we have top five. Top five. Top five standing by. Yeah. So... Let's get right to it. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Before we start, we've been doing this for 55 weeks now. 55 weeks. Five, five weeks. And we come on this YouTube mm-hmm. and we, we talk to each other and to the people that comment and thank you very much for doing that and subscribing and thumbs up and thumbs yeah. down. And, you know, we get, we get uh, some hate also. We get a lot of everything. There's a lot of emotions that mm-hmm. go on. Usually I spend the weekends crying after we put this <laughs> up. Uh, but it, it does take, you know, it does take a little bit to have the stones the courage to, to if you want to do it to go ahead and do it and there's a lot of people that that don't do it because they don't feel comfortable with it and some people want to and i just want to give a shout out quickly to hawks holocron hey who started his own youtube channel what yeah yeah you should check that one out what is is his what is his youtube channel called just his i'm confident is hawks holocron is hawks holocron we i mean said- that makes sense i mean your name is basically a channel right yeah so so uh i'm gonna go on the youtube right now but yeah, we've well, subscribed awesome. to his channel mm-hmm. because why not? But anyway, just wanted to give a shout out because he he mentioned uh, a few weeks ago in one of our episodes that he he was thinking about starting one, mm. and it's right he did so it's right there so Yay. that's on there. It's so getting the views, subscribers. So just check it out. Oh look at that, Winter Star is already on it. Oh, shout what a Winter surprise! Star. <laughs> Winter Star. Yay! We can't, I can't wait to do our Snoke episode with the, thir- uh, with the she, she sent us a 13 page word document his web Snoke. camera looks better than ours <laughs> but um, it helps when you're just looking directly i really like his laptop. t-shirt actually he's got a sith shirt on it's pretty dope oh, it kind of looks Falcon like uh one. queen that, yeah. that one cover that looks pretty awesome so just wanted yeah. to give a shout out to hawks holocron check him out and if you have to, if you want to start your own youtube channel you know yeah. it, it, the only thing is you have to put yourself out there that, yeah. and that's really what it is and yeah you know, it's not for if you don't want to. I mean, we like talking to you guys anyway, so it's yeah. fun. Uh, so anyway, let's go on to the episode. The episode. This has been all over the interwebs lately. Yeah. Han Solo. Ooh la la. Ryan Johnson said that there is that there will be a. What was the terminology that he used? That he, he was going to loom over. Ah. Over the last Jedi, that he was going to be there in essence, an essence of Han Solo was going to yeah. loom over. The Last Jedi. I cool. had an interpretation of it. What was your interpretation of his meaning of that? I think uh, we're definitely going to hear about Han. Uh, because from what we know, Lost, Lost Jedi <laughs> Last Jedi is more or less going to pick up right at the end. What if episode Wars 9 Wiggins. is The Lost Jedi? The Lost Jedi. Um, I have to watch it. And uh, 
So, you know, we don't know how Luke's going to respond to Han uh, having passed on to the next dimension. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So there's that. And we really haven't witnessed the main cast sort of having that uh, mourning period, right? I know I saw on IMDb Harrison Ford was supposed to be on it, but like you can't really trust I- IMDb. We're also on IMDb. That's true. So we are also in The Last Jedi. Yep. I play an Ewok. Podcast exclusive. And you play Teak. And I'm Captain Rex. Commander Rex? <laughs> that Captain would be Rex. so awesome. <laughs> I, grow to, I grow to white beard. I growed it. Um, yeah. No, I think, well, it's not like they're just going to like, oh, he's gone. Like it's, you know, you can't get rid of that character. And... I always can talk about like the main uh, cast of characters, but really, you could sort of forget that and just focus on Kylo's dealing with it. Because killing Han is what he brought him to the dark side or pu- pulled him back into the dark side. Yeah. So that's exactly what I was feeling on this. Mm-hmm. Was that it was more not even that so much was yeah. when he killed him. When you read the book, he doesn't it doesn't fulfill mm-hmm. him the way he thought it would. Right. And so I think that's what's going to be weighing on him the most is mm. I and I, you know part of what I think is maybe Snoke is the one that has really well we know Snoke corrupted Ben Solo, but now mm-hmm. he's corrupted him in, in like a giant lie where Ben was never meant to turn to the dark side, and that's why Ben's so powerful in the light and the dark is because he's not really a dark side user, but Snoke has tricked him into believing because of his lineage because as a grandfather right. he's meant to be this big dark side user mm-hmm. and in reality he's not he's ben solo is like 90 percent good but he's been so duped into this and he, you know he was lied to probably about his grandfather and whatnot right and he started using that and snoke used that and so he kills his father thinking this is the moment where mm-hmm. i'm going to become the big bad in the galaxy the dark side is going right. to surround me i'm going to mm-hmm. be all powerful and instead he feels possibly weaker now he doesn't feel like he like the dark side didn't corrupt him like he thought it would right in the good and not corrupt him but in the good way to take over him and instead he's he's now very torn he's even right, more torn right, than right, right. he was and so and maybe this will make him hate luke even more <laughs> <laughs> somehow it always comes back to luke skywalker uh yeah i don't know it's i i think most fans will don't want han solo to just disappear off the map you know i think the one is much i mean let's i mean we face facts here's ford doesn't want to be han solo anymore and it's not a disrespect to the character or being mistreated or whatever he just he's an old man he doesn't want to do this stuff anymore although he wants to do indiana jones and he just did, did blade runner who knows you can never tell with harrison ford if you watch any interview with him in the last pff, forever He's just sarcastic all the time. So really, all he wants to do is live on his island, fly paints, and smoke weed with Callista Flocker. <laughs> I believe I've said that before. Speaking of which, it's not in our news, but mm-hmm. George Lucas just bought a winery next to someone's house. I can't remember who, but anyway. So what, he, like here or in Napa oh God, Valley? No, in like the states, in California. <laughs> have you? Calif- <laughs> How does like Skywalker Ranch not have a winery well, on it? Like Isn't like that? I've been to Skywalker closer? Ranch, not inside of it. <laughs> But, but like it's in that area. Uh no, it's a little bit out. Oh. It's like an hour away. It's far enough. The soil's not there. Mm. <laughs> the soil and the fog. You yeah. need fuck. Anyway, because yeah. Wait. Anyways, uh, that's cool. Uh, uh, that's what we we're talking about. Hansel. So like, you know, I I, I don't I'm not gonna speak for Harrison Ford, but I don't think he wants to do stuff like that anymore. Or, or, I, who knows? They're actors. They don't make any sense. Uh, but they yeah. Don't have like, to. Would you be adverse to a CG anime, a CG Han in a, a movie or something like that? Like if they were to show a flashback scene that never was that shot, so like a young Han or something like that. Well, would it be Harrison Ford like the way Robert Downey Jr. was de-aged in? Yeah, I would hope so. At the very least, no, like, why would I not be okay with that? I don't know. People are really about it, right? I, so no, I'd be, I would be down even if he was like, oh, you know what? I don't want to be in it. You could do what you did with Dragon. Yeah. I would be down for that too. Like, yeah. I, like Leia is a little different because she passed away, mm-hmm. and it's a little bit tricky. And then if she's going to be a main character, and you just have someone who just passed away, that's kind of yeah. it, it's it's tricky because it's almost it, because of how soon after it is, it's disrespectful. But Harrison Ford is still alive, and if he's like, you know what, I don't want to be in it. Yeah, you want to yeah. make me younger? Just get you know get a little kid to stand in for me. Get that guy. Oh, what's that guy's name? Gruber. Yeah, the, the guy who, Tarkin. 
No, the guy who does Han Solo, like Harrison Ford on the internet. He's in the Age of Adeline. He plays a young one. Gruber. I think his last name is Gruber. You guys will know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, get him to voice him. You know, just because whatever. And, or get all right, the right, right. You can't get all the narrow right, I guess, because it would be confusing. Or you do that, and that's how you tie it in. I don't know. But I, I have, have no problem yeah. with de-aging or CGing. But you know, like, it's, it's interesting because, like, uh, putting Peter Cushing in... Uh, young Carrie Fisher, like, well, obviously they talked to Carrie Fisher, but, like, uh, Peter Cushing's family gave them approval to do that. And we do know that Carrie Fisher's, like, uh, f- family, I yeah. believe it was her daughter, her daughter and her brother said, yeah, put her in episode eight or nine CG, that's fine. But, like, this is sort of side Akbar, I guess, but, like, I wonder why di- uh, Lucasfilm doesn't want to do that. I Maybe respect that I can get that, but, like... It's I, interesting. I think it's respect and backlash. I think because of how soon after, I think you could yeah. get a lot of backlash for that. Um, that. Yeah, I can agree with that, but it just, it does, I had the same moment, like, but everyone was okay with Force Awake or um, Rogue One. But, I don't know. But she was still alive, and Peter Christian's yeah. been dead for 20 years. Yeah. So there's a little, I think that, like, I would have no problem with it if mm. I did it. Like, I, I did a, yeah. was it I Rebel, or I think, with uh, Andrew? Or flying casual, and he said he wants. He was like, "I want Meryl Streep to play Leia," and I was just like, "No, <laughs> absolutely not. She can act as well as she acts." Yeah. No, because if you put a no, like a no, no name actor in there, actress mm. in there that I don't recognize, then I'm like, that's still not Leia. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if you get a young version, you're like this is a young Leia, I can get on board with that. But right. when you're like, this is the sequel, and it's almost like there's so, like yeah, you changed Dumbledore. Okay. Yeah. There's some things I could be okay with you changing at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not unheard of to do such a thing. But I feel like you went through the trouble to to bring all of us back into Star Wars. Not yeah. that we were out of it. Yeah. But, you know, people back into Star Wars by bringing Luke, Leia, and Han yeah. and not replacing the actors, getting the actual... Like, if Harrison Ford turns down The Force Awakens, then, uh, like, do they recast them? I don't think so. I think yeah. for some, there's something about these roles, and I don't have the answer right now, but there's something mm. about these roles specifically that if you recast, it's wrong. Yeah. Whereas Dumbledore, and I love the original Dumbledore, and it took me a long time to get used to <laughs> the new one. Like, it, it did. It was like, they're completely different. And that, that was smart, mm. too, was making them very, very yeah. different. But Leia's Leia. We all know yeah. Leia. She, and she's been Leia for 40 years. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Three movies, four movies now, but three, you know, so she's a pop, the, an icon, a pop, yeah, a pop icon. So that, anyway, getting on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I what? mean, you know what? He's in it. Great. He's not. Whatever. You know. I mean, it's, we just got to deal with it. We could have nothing. So I guess we all have to look at that. I, I just, I don't. There are a lot of flashbacks. We so could appear in a flashback. Mm-hmm. I just think that. I think it's going to be more him looming over mm. Leia and, yeah. and Ben yeah. and Kylo. And I think that's where... It is. And so he's not he's going to be a character in that... In present. And not presence, but in, mm. in like emotions yeah. and whatnot. Kind of like he's going to loom over it all, just like he says, where he's like... his The weight of his death is going to be very impactful on this film. Here's something we kind of haven't talked about. They don't have a body. Like he fell into a reactor or the core of Murder Planet. So... He blows up. Does he? Oh well, yeah. I guess the plan blows up. But I mean, you're saying he's alive. We cut. We cut, I'm not saying he's alive. No, some people think he is alive. I mean, they drop Boba Fett into a Sarlacc pit, and they're like, "Oh, he'll come back." No, he's uh, dead. Boba Fett is dead. <laughs> <laughs> but like Darth Maul got cut in two, and somehow, I mean, not somehow. We know what happens, but like, it's just there could be a way. But again, like it's, I think it all boils if, down to Harrison Ford doesn't want to do anything. If, if Han Solo comes back, that mm. just cheapens the Force Awakens. Yeah, I would agree. Off. Like the, Darth Maul doesn't cheapen the Phantom, the death in the Phantom Menace because he comes back in animated form and expanded universe, yeah, exactly. extended universe, I should yeah. say. And that, so in the films, he's he's dead, 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 dead. But yeah, you, know, you can come back and tell side stories. Mm-hmm. Han Solo, I think, is even different there. Where I just, you just let him be. And Darth Maul's character is very different at the beginning of like it's running Clone Wars, so it's yeah. It's, I mean, there's like there is a continuation, but they're like, hey, let's try something. Like he had like scorpion legs, yeah, so like <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's great that they could do that, but yeah. you can't do that with Han Solo. No. Han Solo is no, exactly. He has to be dead for 
for the film to mm. for for the franchise to move forward. Yeah, exactly. Is that supposed to blink red? Yep. This thing right here is blinking red. Hi guys, technical stuff. Of course, when you look at yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's running. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, oh that's peaking. Oh, okay, we're peaking. I thought you were looking at this. No, I, no, the other one. I'm yeah. just you know because after yesterday's debacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I understand. <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh, I was going to mention uh, T-shirts on T-Public are on sale until Friday. Well, oh wow! Like but until Friday, uh, check them out. Uh, check out the ones that were in the T-shirt contest as well. Help out some fellow artists or unfellow artists, or mm-hmm. help independent artists, people that just had yeah. ideas to throw out there. I uh, just help them out there. The T-shirts are fourteen dollars. Mugs are twelve. I think you can get stickers for two dollars. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The uh, stickers are cool. Stickers are very cool. And, uh, yeah, so support some uh, independent artists and go yeah. to public. But if you could buy them from our site, that'd be cool, too. Yeah. And we have stuff that we didn't design on there also. We have the Rebel Rebel Leia shirt on our store right now. Yeah, no, that was cool. I was like, oh, did someone design? I was like, oh, right, we're supporting. <laughs> yeah, we're just, I just thought it was cool. Yeah, that's a cool shirt. Anyway, uh, Snoke. Snoke. What about him? Have you seen? I have it on my, my iPad, which I don't mm. have on me right now. But this picture will go on Facebook. We're not going to put it in this video. We'll be on our Facebook page. Search Rebel Scum Podcast on Facebook, and you will find it. Mm-hmm. It is a picture of action figures. It's a Praetorian guard. Mm. Patrono, Patronium. Patrolium. Yeah, they're Roman guards. <laughs> Pret- they're they're <laughs> those Patronium. guards, and it's Snoke, and they're side yeah. by side, and Snoke is significantly larger than the guard. Now, I don't know if it is a black series Mm. Like you mentioned yesterday on the show, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> a black series, or or regular. Well, how big are they? Three point six or five or whatever, six inches, yeah, whatever. They right. Yeah, but then I don't know if it's a regular toy. But he is significantly larger in his gold robe. Uh, the other point of interest that I have to sh- uh, inform you of is he is. It appears that he is wearing a black ring. Oh, okay. So then those those. Uh that information from back in a couple months ago was true. Well, Josh at uh, Celebration, because he got into... Oh, right. Right? He sat beside someone from Lucasfilm who confirmed it all to him. Oh, that? I, mean, I can't keep track of how No, I think it came... Is. I think it was all like... I think it was all combined. But he mm. rented... And the guy said it, and then he found out he was a YouTuber, and he goes, oh, you can't say that. <laughs> so, oh, well, there was more information, then he stopped yeah. talking to him because yeah, he found yeah. out what. But yeah, the black ring seems to be on the toys, which means... It's interesting. Yeah, if you're going to put that much detail on a little action figure. And, like, we could not assume, but we could guess that um, it's a kyber crystal. It, I mean, we don't need to assume. It would be kind of neat. Uh, I think that was one of the things floating around the internet. Is like, maybe it's a black kyber crystal, and then it'll it'll, it'll glow when he's near a Jedi or a Force <laughs> Will. Now like, we love that Lord of the Rings that turned to... <laughs> what if... How, how would you feel if that... If Snoke at some point in this saga ignites the dark saber, that would be sweet. Like that would be great because it's just something that would like, oh, that's fan service right there. But at the same note, if you don't explain what it is, it doesn't matter. It it's like, oh, he's the saber. evil guy. He has a black si- lightsaber. That's new. Yeah, well, they mentioned the black mm-hmm. saber in Rogue One. Yeah, sorry. Wow, wasn't it? Was it black saber or was it dark saber? Wait, which is which? Black Saber is the one the, the Mal- from the Mandalorian. Okay, so Dark Saber Dark is Saber. in Rogue One. I get them confused all the time yeah. because whatever. Anyway, so they mentioned the reverse one, and that, but it could be the same thing. Yeah. I mean, well, black yeah. is black. The Empire, Palpatine is just like, ah, it's black, call it the Black Saber. Yeah, it's yeah, dark, yeah, call it yeah. the Dark Saber. You know, it's, he doesn't know. He doesn't but it would be that. neat. Like, uh, yeah. Um, though I wonder if, like, because you know how all uh, evil, like the Sith, they, all their, their lightsabers are red. Right, yeah. so if people. I mean, Grant, we don't know Snoke's a Sith. He probably isn't. He's not supposed to be. Maybe he's like people get confused. Like, oh, he has a black one. That's different. I'm like, well, yeah. Then we get into that conversation of like, this is not. It's a lightsaber, but it's a different kind of lightsaber. But at the same time, they, even if you explain all that, they'd be like, I don't really care. It's exactly. Like, so it's so like I'm like, eh, who cares? But it's easy to. It would look cool though. A black. Oh, I think it would look really cool. Remember when there was a rumor in the prequels that there was going to be a lightsaber like a flame lightsaber like it was going to be full of it was going to be like made of fire yeah that was a rumor and then the scorpion king came out and the rock had one <laughs> <laughs> well there was like some kind of like lightsaber whip 
I think, in Expanded Universe, because I remember oh, having probably. a bug on that. That's actually the, the leash from the Polar Express that said The <laughs> Polar <laughs> Express. Uh, yeah, Tom Hanks. <laughs> When's he going to make his Star Wars debut? Oh, my God. Episode 10. It has David S. Pumpkins from SNL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, Sno- Snoke is... My hope, I always kind of wish that Snoke was, uh, like, uh, since, since February, I, th- I wish that Snoke was a fallen will, like a pure dark side matter. Right, right, that. right. And then Andrew and I did the Unleashed on whether or not he could be the leader of, uh, like, a Black Sun type gang. Mm, mm. And you see what he's dressed in, and he looks very reminiscent of what we've seen from Canto Bite. Like, I feel like he's going to fit in with that Canto Bite crowd. Right, right. And somehow he knows Leia, and that deleted scene in The Force Awakens, like it or not, when Han Solo makes his like smoke, smoke, Han Solo obviously knows something about Snoke and does not respect Snoke. Mm-hmm. There's something there. And I think you and Andrew and Josh all commented on our Revenge of the Fifth episode that mm-hmm. maybe he's an imposter. Maybe he knows that there's something out there in the mm-hmm. galaxy and he's pretending to be this. And somehow Leia, maybe and Han, or Leia and she told Han, figured this out and they know that he's an imposter. Right. And that's what's happening. Maybe he's even... He's even tricked Luke in a lot of ways. And now Luke has gone because he's like, I let this guy fool me. I'm supposed to be better than this. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not who Ben so- Ben Kenobi thought I was. Maybe I'm not who Yoda, or maybe I am who I'm Yoda. <laughs> or, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to be like this. And maybe what I believe in is wrong or something like that. Right, right. <sighs> maybe. I don't know. It's just, I guess we could pause it. Uh, Wicked is not. Make it is snow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because th- it's just so ambiguous what he's up to. Well, we've been told nothing. Nothing, exactly. Um, I don't know. It's just the question is, like, can you explain that enough into a movie sort of thing? You know what I mean? Well, it depends on... Yeah. How elaborate the story I mean, is. If you, you, everyone's like, it's the man behind the curtain. The Wizard of Oz did. Yeah, exactly. Thing, right? Like... There are ways. There are ways to do almost That's everything true. very simple, and there are ways to overcomplicate yeah. it. And it depends on how you're going to tell it. And it sounds like we're not going to get that answer now. We're going to get it. No, yeah, later. it's. But like you're right. It, like I always, when Force Awakening came out, it was it was like a Wizard of Oz sort of thing because it's just you're like, oh, look at this massive dude. Like that's weird. And then it turns into it's a hologram. You don't really until like the second time you see him, you're like, oh, so it's like, well, he could be anything. I think or we used to say that could just be a, like the hologram could be a subterfuge and it's like someone it was like, oh, it could be Leia, <laughs> Leia Snoke. Oh, because she doesn't. Oh, because she doesn't want to be part of the New Republic anymore. So she's created a whole new thing so she can split off and be a general again. I think that's actually out there. Probably. <laughs> I mean, everything is out there right now. It's amazing how elaborate a theory can get if there is nothing to counter kind of uh like right now you can say snoke is blank yeah and, and i can't we, dis and i can disagree with you but you can't i can't yeah you're not disproving yeah, yeah like <laughs> I, like you you could be a hundred percent right like, the only <laughs> thing we know for sure is that snoke is not jar jar because andy circus was asked by entertainment weekly what his least favorite <laughs> snoke theory was and he said snoke is jar jar was his least favorite <laughs> snoke theory so that one is put to bed thank done you. I'm so glad because I was just talking with uh, one of our viewers on on, on the comments today, mm. and they said that they actually they're talking about the prequels and mm. and Jar Jar, and they they were saddened by Jar Jar's ending in in the which one was that in Aftermath Empire's End in the book. Oh, how yeah. he became that sad Empire's clown End. and yeah. and all that. And I was like, yeah, that was very sad, but it was very fitting for that character, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it made so much sense, and it was poignant, and I really, really. I liked it, yeah. and I appreciated that. Mm-hmm. I appreciated his ending and how they were like, nothing special happens to Jar Jar. He kind of becomes a joke. Everyone hates his guts because <laughs> he he created the Empire yeah, essentially, yeah. and this is the consequence of that. And mm-hmm. I really like that because that's the pre that is like fitting for what we saw in three movies. The question is like, and then I feel like when I hear that, I'm just like, oh, that's the that's just the author like. Again, fan service is like, well, you guys don't like it, so here we go. Well, like, here's something gratifying. I mean, well, it could also have been to diffuse this. He's which uh, it's fine, but it's just like that. Being said, I'm curious that when they have new characters, 
how thought out do they think their history? You know what I mean? They're like, oh, we're going to have this character. Like, say it's a movie. So we cast Greg Gr- Grunberg as Snap Wexley. What are we going to do with him? Is he going to, he's going to be in these movies? And then, oh, Poe Dameron book? Put him in there. And then, like, it's, or, and then, like, um, Twilight Company. Is it Twilight Company? No, Aftermath, right? Where he's in it, or his mother's in it. Oh, Aftermath, it's his mother. His mother, but then doesn't he show up? He doesn't show up in Bloodline, does he? No, no. He should have been Sea Striker. No, wait, yes, he does. At the very end. The very end. He should have been Sea Striker in that book, though. That's what I thought. But that's what I mean. Like, it's like, they think of these characters, regardless of who the actor, actor, actor is, like, do they like okay? This person does this, and then this, then this. No, like I know, like the writers flush flesh it out, but they're like, there's gotta be rules where it's like it's this. So it's like my reason for bringing that up. It's like Jar Jar. It's like oh, he's gonna be great. It's gonna be this, and then the the fans don't like him, so it's like gone. <laughs> Get oh, rid of him. Totally. Put him in the background. That's it. No, I think like what what happened is Abrams Kazan would write the characters, mm-hmm. and from what I heard about the the. The Last Jedi is Luke's back. There was no Luke backstory, and I believe Carrie Fisher had to make up her backstory for those three. Right. They made up. So in their mind, this is what happened with them. Mm. So I think what happens is they have, they're like, okay, uh, Snap, you are a, an X-Wing fighter pilot, and your mom fought. Yeah, and you have... Uh, and your dad was killed or something. And like, you built, rebuilt a battle droid. <laughs> well, I don't know if they went that far. But you know what I mean? And then, and then the story group goes, okay, we've got to write this. Okay, let's throw this guy in there as a little treat. But I still have to, there's still something about that. Yeah. Where his name is Snap in Force Awakens. Yeah, and he's Tevin. Tevin. And, and then the second one, you're like, okay, now we're going we're gonna to find out how he gets his nickname. Mm-hmm. And is the dumbest explanation for anything ever. It's because he can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and Wedge gives him that nickname. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, it, that, anyway, so yeah, I don't think that was planned at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They should have just call him. So I don't know if they were the same character or not right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Or there was like, at some point, someone was like, Temin. Yeah. Should be that. The th- the, it makes me think of, because in comics today, it's a, it's a, the star, uh, the new issue of Star Wars ongoing is a story around Santa. So it's just like, how thought out is she th- before? Or like, I mean, obviously they pitch the idea of a character being in this comic. So, are we going to see her in this? Or how thought out is it? Is it sort of just run with it? I don't know. These are the things that we should find out. So, like, it uh, relates back to Snow, Snow, Snoke, where it's just like, who, who is he? I don't, I, he he's a, just a big pink thing, you know? He's the pink monster that we see on Acto. Boom. Bam. All right, <laughs> finally, Luke Skywalker, a lot of debate online about Lukey Luke and mm-hmm. whether or not he will ignite his green lightsaber. I saw someone post about whether or not he yep. would and if he would like him to, and then I started thinking, and I thought about this, Brock. Yep. What if he refuses to use weapons? Right. He's like, I am I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. I do not use weapons. <laughs> I can lift things with, my, with the Force. I can mm-hmm. manipulate things as I wish, but I will not engage in combat. That's not what I'm going to do. Jedi did that for thousands of years, yep. and look where it got us to this day. Yep. The the galaxy is in ruins, blah, 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 blah. And throughout the course of the film, you know, he slowly obviously is going to... We don't know if he's going to train Rey, actually. Well, we right. do. I guess there's that one shot with both of them. But anyway, so he trains Rey. But really what the story of Acto is about is about the last Jedi, and the last Jedi is Luke Skywalker. Because at this moment in time, Luke Skywalker is the last Jedi. Rey yep. is not a Jedi. Yep. Ben Solo is not a Jedi. It's only Luke. And the story is about The Last Jedi, which would be Luke, and it would be about Rey bringing Luke back to the Jedi. It's time for the Jedi to end. All of that is very early on. This is all speculation. I have no idea. It could be completely wrong at the very beginning. But the story of Luke is actually about him re-becoming a Jedi Knight, becoming mm-hmm. who he should have been, understanding the ways of the Force, whether it's the gray area that we speak a lot about or pure Jedi, whatever it is. It's about him refining that, yep. and the movie will end with Ray finally getting through to him yeah. and making Luke understand the ways of the Force the way he thought he knew it, but now he actually understands a little bit more. And the movie ends with him about to get, meet up with Snoke, mm. igniting the green lightsaber. Like, we only see it for half a second. He ignites yeah. that lightsaber, and there it is. Mm. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be in for that, because I think it should be... A dramatic ending in some way and even it's something simple as that is like let's get to work like dun, 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 dun. like that'd be awesome uh and i'm we've talked about this before i de- like you just said it like it's i definitely see luke as a 
he's gone through some kind of new either a, like a trauma or just he's he's un, he's more he's changed some way in his personality so he's not that hot-headed pilot from Tatooine anymore he's this grizzled old man that has a new view of life and it doesn't need to mean he's going to be all grumpy and stuff because i think that's where a lot of people tend to go but i think he's he's aware of something that we don't know and that's what the base of the movie is going to be about yeah that's why right. there's also the rumor that he's going to yeah. have a a red kyber crystal around his neck right 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 i yeah i don't know it's but yeah i think it's he's got to have a lightsaber even if he doesn't use it <laughs> It'd be awesome if he just took it out and used it like to cut bread and stuff. He used it for all the things that we don't want him to use it for. <laughs> and it's like he's like Ray. He's like sh- like Ray's training on the shore, and he's up on the mountain. He's like Ray, Ray, and she can't hear him. And he's all and he's like, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> like it be uh, nah, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> but you know what you I mean. He'll kill a porg with it. Oh God. Well, how do you? <laughs> how else are you gonna? <laughs> Hunt and, and eat a pork. That's right. They eat porks. Boom. I think Chewie does. There's a shot on the <laughs> internet where with the feather. What well, looks yeah. like a white feather on yeah, his mouth. Is. Yeah. And you actually, he's in the ship, and we see a picture of a pork in the ship. Yeah, exactly. Oh my. Chewie. <laughs> he's like, this is it doesn't look like the same ship though, but I could be wrong. Who cares? It, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chewie the pork is all about him eating pork. <laughs> How crazy would that be if he did eat a porg and then they put out that kid's book called Chewy and the Porgs? Like, he's like, first Chewy puts salt. Yeah. <laughs> then he has a pepper. It's just a cookbook. <laughs> Ten yeah. different ways to to serve porg. I mean, who, whose lightsaber is around uh, Luke's neck? Is it Obi Wan's that uh, was corrupted by by a Sith and turned red, or is it Vader's is mm. it daddy's lightsaber? I feel like it would be Vader. Uh, just because. You know, I mean, if Vader's lightsaber is going to end up with anyone, it would be him, sort of, I guess. I Based on nothing, just, you know, he was there when he when he died. Or does, what happens to Vader's lightsaber in Return of the Jedi? Just falls to the ground, or does it fall into that? Does it matter? Maz Kanata probably got her hands on it anyway. <laughs> yeah, they bought it on, they bought it on Amazon. <laughs> in the Amazon. In the Amazon, Boom. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think it would be more significant because, again, if it's Obi-Wan's corrupted kyber crystal, you have to go to the trouble of explaining it. If you're like, I, I, I would assume, no? like Because, uh, like, where's Obi-Wan's lightsaber? No, because I think you'd just be like, this is my old master's lightsaber. Yeah, uh, unless Vader corrupted it because he did. He yeah. did. And then you don't even have to explain the corruption because then your parents would be like, why, does, why is it red? And then you mm. can be like, because it gets, when they corrupt it, it's yeah, red. Exactly. And then you're just like, oh. Okay, but then like, but like, you can say, "Oh, this is the crystal from my father's lightsaber," and everyone's like, "Perfect!" Like, but like Obi Wan, you kind of have to like, "Well, I found this, then I did this, and then I did this, and then this." You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it can't happen, but like, I think explanation just takes a little bit longer. So yeah, if they explain it, and that's such an insignificant, in my opinion, it's an <laughs> insignificant thing, regardless of what the Unless Kyber Chris Ray is. is a Kenobi, which she is <laughs> not, obviously, because she is Ray Bibbo. No, Rebo? No, Ray Bibble. Sayo Bibble. Sayo Bibble. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Well, she's from Naboo. God. Mm, mm, mm. Jeez, man, you just gotta trust me on this one. I, know I do, one. I do, I do. All right. I know Sex. what's going on. All right, let's move on to everyone's favorite <laughs> don't even know. never tell me the odds Let's never tell me the odds today's odds are brought to you in part by odds makers all right ready for this yeah the odds of last jedi trailer by the end of august or force friday i'm gonna be optimistic and go like 75 percent wow because i feel like they just force friday needs something I, I don't think it needs something but it'd be nice but what are the odds? Sort to of cut you off. Mm-hmm. Side up, or what are the odds that one's dropping right now while we're recording? <laughs> it's pretty high because it seems to happen. It hasn't been for a while. I feel. Well, but it like, hasn't yeah. been news. But hold on, yeah. I'm gonna type in Star Wars. Ready? Type in Star Wars. Star Wars. Porn. <laughs> well, last from I survived the pressure of trusting his inner fan. This should be a segment where we <laughs> search it. The top three stories. 
The Dark Tower is a Star Wars cash-in. Anyway, uh, so here's the 75%. My odd will be 40, 29.73562. Right. Because uh, Rogue One came out. The Rogue One trailer was August 9th or 11th or somewhere in that area. We are yep. just past that now. But um, but what happened with Rogue One was different. We had that weird trailer, yep. which was awesome, but none of it was in the movie. Yep. Then we got what we thought was going to be a trailer ended up being a sizzle reel. Then we got a trailer, which was still stuff that wasn't in the movie. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't really get another trailer. Right? right, yeah, yeah. Last Jedi, I feel like they're going to follow the Force Awakens formula minus the one trailer. So we got so they skipped the Thanksgiving trailer, which right. was a teaser with Finn waking up and right. do you, there's been an awakening, blah, blah, mm. blah. They skipped that because they don't need to tell anyone that the Star Wars is back. It's already yeah. back. So you skip that when you go right... To Star Wars Celebration, which was later, yeah, or which was earlier, which was April. Uh, no, the other one was March or April. Oh, maybe they're both the same. Mm. So you skip that, and then when's the next one? The next Force Awakens trailer was October when they sold the tickets and did the whole thing. And why would you do one now? And then you know they're going to do that again. So yeah. why would you do both? I think they're going to. We're not going to get one until. Yeah, if we don't get one in the next like thirty days, it's not going to be till like. October, like sort of football season, like they did last time, sort of thing. Yeah, I, that's right. All right, and the odds of Galen Merrick, aka Stakula, based, making his way into canon. Uh, I'm gonna go five percent <laughs> because I feel like he's one of those characters that was very popular with Lucasfilm, and because there was a possible project in the future with him. It's sort of like Luke, uh, Disney sort of like saying, ah, we don't want to take your ideas. We're going to take our own. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean he couldn't create a character like him or retcon him in some way, but like, I think it's just, I think Disney has a big thing on, this is our new thing. So, I don't know. Sam Witwer has still gotten a lot of work out of out of Lucasfilm since the, the merger or the purchase. I'm going to go 39.1. Hmm. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I don't think he will be as powerful as he was in the game. Right, right, right. Um, but I think he's a cool character, and I would right. like to see him come back in some form. You know what? I, I said this before to you, not recording it, but I said this where I think it would I would be okay with a, a, a Force Unleashed 3 yep. that is not canon. True. I'm okay with playing something that doesn't take place in the Star Wars timeline because yeah. it's just a video game that I'm going to be playing for fun. I don't need it to connect. It's cool when things connect, but when I play Battlefront, I, you know, Luke yeah. never yeah. fought Boba Fett in the middle of Endor, you know? Yeah, like just take just, those games. All you want to do is do Force stuff. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, ideally, it would be nice if it was that character, but if you don't, whatever. Just make that movie. Take that movie, change the character, but then, like, for fans like us, just put, like, Oh, here's a picture of Starkiller. I'm like, oh, Starkiller. And then you could, then, yeah. yeah. All right, final odd. The odds of a Rebel Scum podcast covering Fan Expo Toronto. Zero percent, James. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like two weeks from now. Zero percent. I'm going to one up you there. I'm going to go 100%. What? Because we got an email the other day, I'll show you, uh, from the PR department. We are going to Fan Expo. What? <laughs> oh my God! You can't! You can't be kidding me! I can't stop be this you. show. We, we have passes. <laughs> we have media accreditation for Thursday, Friday, Sunday to Fan Expo. Right. Um. So we're going to go. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things because we were only able to get two. Mm. So everyone else can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay home. Oh my God! I can't believe this. We're going to be. We're going <laughs> to be crazy. there. Uh, I don't have to pay for tickets one year? We need business cards. Where is it? Uh, Anyway, you need a business card for proof of who you are. Right. Uh, Anyway, yeah. So we're going to go. We pick up our tickets uh, 3 p.m. Thursday, August 31st. Okay, cool. So it's going to be fun. I've never been to anything like this. This is awesome. Star Wars Celebration is all I've ever been to. Can't wait to cover this. Uh, we'll do some stories from there. We'll report on it yeah. afterwards, and um, hopefully we can get Aaron to come by. And this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. We got the email, and I mentioned... Oh, yeah, because like, last week I asked you about it, and you're like, we're not getting it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. 
We're That's not, cool. We're, look, we're, media are not permitted to approach celebrity talent or managers on site during the event without pre approval by Fan Expo. Right, right, right. So, right. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we're hoping that we'll do a few videos. Hopefully, we'll get Aaron to come with us and do a scavenger scum and yeah. do some fun stuff like she did right at the celebration. And um, yeah, we got this email. It was like 10 30 at night. <laughs> and and I was I just told Aaron, she's like, I'm like, should I tell Brock? She's like, no, wait for the show. So, <laughs> so we waited until right now. To tell, I lost my page. Wow. To tell you. So that's, I can't, I'm, I'm actually kind of, uh, I didn't think we were going to awesome. get it. But that's, we got. So that really s- makes me psyched. That's we'll awesome. see you at Fan Expo. Yeah, man. It's a bummer because uh, the biggest Star Wars thing is Saturday. Yeah. But, but you're I would have gone to that anyway. And so. you'll report on that. And I can't make the Saturday day anyway. Exactly. So, so there you go. Boom. You got some for us this week. You got some comics. You're coming I actually you bought like, them on time. You didn't read for about two months. Yeah. Of your, I had no two time. Jobs, and now you've been like catching up yeah. tenfold on this. So uh, why don't you tell us what you got? This week, issue 18 of Poe Dameron came out, and issue 34 of Star Wars came out. I'll start with this one since it's in my hand. So this one, uh, the storyline of Yoda's, uh, I guess it was a journal that Luke was reading, is uh, that finished. So now this is just sort of a one-off. It it, it revolves mostly around uh, Santa, and she is up to no good. So it really shows how she's a really good smuggler, and she even at one point calls herself a scoundrel. And as you can see on the cover... We get a little bit of Lando Calrissian, which I feel like we haven't seen much in this because no, we wouldn't have because this takes place during, uh, between uh, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. So we haven't officially met Lando, even though if since Santa knows she's a smuggler and she knows Han, she knows Lando. So that was cool. So this is before Lando's appearance in the films. Yes, and it's uh, the art's really cool. Like you can see right here. Like that looks. Uh, they, we see Jabba. He goes. They, they go to Jabba's palace, and like there's a, a protocol droid with his arm r- ripped off, and you can see Lando right there. Kind of looks movie quality. But the fun thing that ends in this, and it, it doesn't even have a like to be continued at the end of the comic. But we see Han being chased by Tie Fighters in the Millennium Falcon, and he has Gracchus the Hut with him. No. So it's interesting how it ends. So there is a continuation, even though I think this is a one-off story, because we this is coming to the end of Jason Aaron's run on this book, and it's gonna flip to Kieran Gillen, I believe, which is gonna be around that Jedi story. I don't know. I can't remember when that's supposed to occur. So maybe this is the last storyline. But yeah, there's some cool. There might. Uh, it was. I thought it was just a one-off issue, but now with the ending, I was like, whoa! I feel like I'm missing pages. I was like, what? <laughs> so. <laughs> So that was really cool. Art was very good. Poe Dameron, number... What was it? 13? 18. Uh, 18. Con- continuing... Yeah. So this has been going on for almost two years now. Continuing the storyline of... Uh, 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 Poe Dameron? Yeah, no. <laughs> what's their... <laughs> the Black... The Black Squadron. So like they're on this... It's with the new character... Oh, I forget how to pronounce her name. Where is it? So, Linda, who is we saw Poe brought her in, um, and now they thought she was the mole, but now it turns out they found out that Adi Muva, their tech, their engineer, their mechanic, was leaking information to uh, Terex uh, that uh, because he had kidnapped her, his wife, so he's trying to so Adi was doing that he freed his wife and then uh they they he escaped because he's like well now i got two people like the <laughs> the first order still wants him because he has all the information and the resistance like well we gotta not silence him but we have to get him back here and put him in jail sort of thing because he's betrayed us uh so that's half of the mission uh, snap and poe go to find them because they found the location and then the rest, Jess, Car, Cor, yeah, Cor, and Sur Linda are on this planet that's now that the First Order is trying to take over and mine it for a certain resource. I can't remember why, but they're like roughing up the locals and all that. So the those three are trying to save them, and of course they get discovered because. So what happens is the uh, Cor and Jess get 
um, stunned. And then sort of Linda it looks like she's betraying them, but she's a sneaky. She's kind of, she's not sneaky. She's very clever. She's a journalist too, so she's trying to like, how about this sort of thing. So, but basically, Poe and Poe and Snap find out that uh, the First Order had already kidnapped Adi, so they're gonna go and get him as well. So the whole Black Squadron is now because the converging at the First Order, two in prison and two in the X wing. So. Should be an interesting battle come the next issue. But again, art is just on point. It's a fun, it's a fun romp. Like it doesn't really. I wouldn't say there's a lot of anything that needs to be known. It's just here's the characters. This is cool, and the art's awesome. So yeah, check it out. That's comics for this week. Brock's a reader. I read. Speaking you guys, of reading, give a hoot. Moving on to the news. Oh yeah, the news. We're I still live gotta talk. from course on here. Where is? Oh, there's that. Do, 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 this was a interesting one. Yes. Yeah, so we were already talking about Star Killer. Uh, I guess uh, uh, Sam Whitworth was being interviewed or talking about it about how Star Killer. Uh, Galen Merrick was almost in Rebels. Like when Lucasfilm was still in charge, they were heavily talking about including him somehow in that series uh but then when disney purchased it they as i said before they kind of just kibosh at it because it's a lucasfilm specific character or well, they all are but like i think any project that included anyone they kind of didn't want to follow up with because it's not their ideas anymore so he was almost in it uh but I kind of agree with what you said. It's like you kind of can't put him in this because he's so powerful. He pulls a, a star destroyer out of the sky in one of the levels. So it's sort of like, how do you not? How can you stop someone like that? So it almost happened. That would have been cool. But we all know Sam Witwer. He's very busy with Star Wars constantly. And when you when you watch Clone Wars, it, like Anakin looks like him for crying out loud. So yeah, sure. I think there is a way to bring Star mm-hmm. back into canon, but you have to make changes for sure. Yeah, yeah. Next, next uh, sh- story is Laura Dern did a fun video with Entertainment Weekly, uh, sa- telling us what wasn't going to be in uh, Last Jedi because troll. <laughs> she is a troll, I suppose. Obviously, everyone wants to know what's going to happen. She can't say anything, so f- to give them some kind of content, she just said what won't be in Star Wars. Uh, specific things uh, that. Uh, the crawl won't include emojis. Uh, Which I think is a lie. <laughs> Luke Skywalker's first line will not be. He's like, nah, I'm good. Uh, uh, what else was that? The X wings are no, are not going to be changed to NX 17s or something like that. Mario Balotelli is not going to be in the movie and something else. But anyways, check it out. Go to Entertainment Weekly's website, and they have these fun. Like, she, she really plays to the camera. It's, it's fun, but yeah. I mean, what are you, you can't, everybody knows you can't, you just can't do that. You can't ask those questions, so here we go. Yeah, at least she's having fun with it. And yeah. Not just, you know. Exactly. I, which I think, well, she's been around long enough mm-hmm. to, she was in Jurassic Park. She was in Jurassic Park. New tactical mobile game coming out, Star Wars Rise to Power, where you can lead the... First Order or the Resistance, uh, you build your own army and base and stuff like that. There's not a ton of information on it, but EA announced that uh, recently. Should be fun. I'm sure ever, there's a lot of people looking forward to it because there's, I believe there's a similar game. I don't know if EA makes it, but it sounds very similar. But I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, and Hopefully it's good. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be a big deal because a, a lot of different sources are talking about it. So. I will not play it. Cool. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Tunisia. Oh, uh, if you uh, really need to live that Star Wars life, you can still go to Tunisia and see where they filmed and sort of uh, where they filmed a lot of A New Hope with uh, the Moisture Farm and Ma- Mon Espa Spaceport. That stuff is still there. It, they left it and some, some smart Tunisian figured, hey, if we can keep this, if we can take care of this, people will come here and pay us money, which is true. So, and apparently, because it's a desert, it almost got completely wiped out by just 
sand. <laughs> so I think there, at one point there was money raised to like clear it out, but you can still go there and they will show you around. Apparently they're super nice. Fun fact, like the interior of the, of Owen and Baru's house is an actual existing hotel that is under, like not underground, but below surface because it's so hot there. The only way you could like <laughs> sort of live is be underground. So if I ever go, I'm just going to say this looks pretty bad. Yeah, that's where the storm's coming. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and old Uncle George Lucas is still in the in the loop. Hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Is it weird that George Lucas is in the foreground and in the background of this picture? Look, there's someone wearing plaid. <laughs> only George Lucas wears plaid. And Samuel Jackson. That's like, his yeah, future self jumping yeah. from the. Uh, so as much as George Lucas isn't really in charge of star wars anymore uh mm-hmm. his his feedback is always encouraged uh kathleen kennedy said to entertainment weekly that she still talks to him probably every few weeks especially when they're shooting something for his advice on the certain things I, I think his main focus is knowing the lore of the force the philosophy how it all works that he is the go-to guy for that uh so that's kind of neat i mean he doesn't have to be involved, but they still... I mean, you got to respect him. They, he, it was his idea, What, however way you feel about it. I think it would be very interesting if he would just sit at home and write books about the philosophy of the Force and that, and then release it like later on, like before he passes away. Like That would be very interesting. <laughs> He's not J.K. Rowling, but I would... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fantastic Siths and where to find them. Fantastic Siths. I would totally be... He should do that because... You know, Dave Filoni knows a lot about this stuff, and there are people in, in Lucasfilm that obviously know a yep. lot about the lore, but nobody will ever know as much as George Lucas knows. Right, right, right. He understands it. He created it. He birthed it. He knows what's going on. He knows where it should go, how mm-hmm. you should manipulate the forest, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm, it, it's good that Kathleen Kennedy will listen. To, well, not they should listen, but yeah, it's good that she will hear so. him out on that stuff, right? You like, got to respect. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They've been around for a long, long top five. Top five. What's top five today, James? Today's top five are porks. Our top five favorite porks. That's a lie. <laughs> the fat one. The one that looks up in the camera. The one on the Millennium Falcon. The one that looks like a pork. Uh, this week's top five was a, actually a difficult one for mm. me to put together. Uh, it is top five languages. <laughs> That's awesome. Top five languages, um, not on Earth, but in the galaxy far, far away, <laughs> Star Wars languages, which, you know, when I started doing it, shout out to Toydarians. You didn't make my list. Yeah. I really wanted you to, uh, but unfortunately, you just couldn't because as I was making it, there were a lot more languages that I liked <laughs> and I realized. So, Brock, what's your number five? My number one is a cop-out. Uh, mostly, I enjoy when Anakin would speak another language in... Phantom Menace, like when he's talking to Watto, when he's talking to uh, Sabalba, so speaking whatever Doug speak, and then Todarian, like you just said, there's just something funny about it, like because it's like it's like when a, like an English person knows how to say speak Spanish. I don't know if this actually occurs, not just Spanish, just another language, but then it just can't get the proper pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know. It's espresso, and it was like, or no, not even worse than that. Like, you know, like uh, uh, bruschetta or <laughs> bruschetta. Don't, don't. It's like no bruschetta or whatever. Get like, out of my house. I live. You're Italian. I live with an Italian, and I've been corrected on a lot of things. So like, it's prosciutto. <laughs> hey, prosciutto. So it's it's like Anakin is like the opposite of that. How do you say it's it like, normally? Prosciutto. Well, like, it, until you know how to pronounce it, a lot of people would say, like, prosciutto or prosciutto, you know what I mean? Really? Prosciutto. But you grew up knowing how it's pronounced, so. It, it's, you know, the espresso, espresso sort of deal, right? My number five <laughs> is Woogie. There's yeah. got to be a word for it, though, like. What language? Do, okay, give me your number five. My number my, four is Woogie, though, because there's something extremely comforting in hearing Chewie talk. My number four is Jawa. Here's number five was Wookiee. Yeah. Oh, Wookiee language of sh- Shiri Shiri Wook. That's it. I, I'm just going with Wookiee, man. I Wookiee's fine. I, we all knew it. Well, there's a Wookiee language translator. Oh, of course there is. I got to. Sorry, guys. I got to do this. <laughs> oh, but they spell it differently, though. Wook, they spell it with one E. So is it the same? Oh, it's the same Wookiee. Hold on. Brock. 
Oh, does it make noise? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, mm. it doesn't make noise. Brock's name when click on that. Does that do something? No, that's the translator. Uh, Brock's name in Wookiee is U U H. Type in Rebel Scum Podcast and see what it is. Okay, what's your number? Oh, you're in, yours is Wookiee, right? Uh, oh. Jawa. <laughs> All right, Rebel Scum Podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this what's is your fun. number four? My number four. Uh, yours was Jawa. Yeah, mine's also Jawa. Yay! Udidi. Yeah, I think it was just. Uh, it's similar to like Ewok where it's like cutesy, like whatever, but I think Jawa, we just sort of embraced that first. It was the first sort of yeah. like language we kind of heard. So I, uh, yeah, Jawa's mm. my number three is speaking of which Ewok. Oh, Ewoks. I love me some Ewok. You can't get better than Wicket or Princess Nisa. Well, my n- number three is, is uh Wookiee or Our list is whatever the word I can't remember now. <laughs> What's your number? Did you say number three? Uh, yeah, I did my number three. My number two, Tognath. Tog- I don't know what the language is. It's Tognath. That's uh, Tommy Two Tubes. <laughs> Eight, six, seven, five, that. three. Uh, Edgar Two Tubes. Speak. He's from Tognath, so it's Tognathian. I don't know what the language is, but he sounds awesome. Yeah. And he is, I would say, out of all the creatures. Oh no, that's not true. Force Awakens had a few. Mm. The the secret weapon. Yep. Uh, she sounded very Star Wars. He sounds very Star Wars. Yeah. Like he sounds, it's comfortable. Like when he hears what she's like, oh yeah, that's my childhood right there. <laughs> my number two is Jabba the Hutt. So Hutties. Uh, there's just something f- hilarious about that. It's like, ho, 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 heart and solo. Which is not really Hutties at all. I'm just saying words. My number one is Hutties. Is it? Andrew Fantasia called me. Andrew, say hi. We're doing the Rebels Come podcast. <laughs> What's your number one language? My Rob? number one is Ewoks because Ewoks. come on, come on. <laughs> well, I love them yep, too, no. but I, Hutt, Hutt, there's something about Jabba the Hutt's voice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Andrew, what's your favorite language in Star Wars? Um, oh boy, I don't know. Uh, whatever one it is that when the droid walks past C three PO and he says, it should not. "Oh God, <laughs> yeah, good question, good." Good call on that one. We're just wrapping up the show. Are you yep. downstairs? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Daryl's so. going to come get you. I'm hanging up. Bye. All right. I don't, all right. I don't like that guy at all. I hope he never becomes canon. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, that's our show today. That's that was a good fantastic. top five. It was uh, entertaining, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot more languages than Oh, yeah, yeah, though, for sure. For sure. I can't wait. You are going to Mexico in a couple of yeah, days. So. Um, I don't know if you heard this, but uh, you're going for a friend's wedding. Yep. And I was at the friend's place yesterday. <laughs> and um, apparently the weather is very off and on. 40 degrees, but, but rainy, apparently. Yeah. He's freaking out, but it's tropical rain, so it yeah. lasts 13 seconds. Yeah, exactly. If any, if any of you are in Mexico right now, please let us know. <laughs> but apparently for the week, the UV rating will be 11 which is like the highest possible because he the, sh- the chart showed like it was yellow which is bad then red which is bad and then apparently it went purple <laughs> on so, a scale of hoth to twin sons of <laughs> tatooine how hot is that is that mustafar mustafar <laughs> well, just, just make sure you wear sunscreen make sure your roommate these, Darryl these are the things you do with for your friends so uh, well, I know, it's better than being cold. Yeah, exactly. But I'm just saying, make sure you're wearing sunscreen because that's the most dangerous. Oh, for sure. Life. I'm going to wear a muumuu the whole time. Yeah, it's going to be great. I, the, the wedding's on the, uh, the Thursday. Yeah. So I would definitely wear, I would wear long sleeves until the Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so hopefully we'll get to do something while yep. you're there. We might yep. do something before you leave for there, but yep. if not, have a very good trip. Yep. And uh, that, anything else you want to No, know? that's it. Right, Check guys. me out on Instagram and Twitter at BS Mink. I know you were going to say it, but. And you can follow me at Petsafina on everywhere. Including Buy a shirt, subscribe, oh, yeah. like, send us your theories, send us your queries. I don't have a f- uh, third line that rhymes. James. No worries. For the rest of your life. <laughs> this has been Rebel Scum Podcast, and. May the force of others be with you. Always. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.